Hi, everyone. I think that's the right time to start talking, so you don't need to check whether you have audio connection or not. And if you can hear us now, then everything is OK. If you don't hear me, please adjust the settings. Uh, we are about to start in a few minutes. Today, we have a very special event, and I um, want to ask our panelists to turn on your cameras and microphones as we go in live. Hi, Wilhelm. Hi, Rob. Hey, Rob. Hi, Good, day, gentlemen. Good day. Great. I want Good to day. welcome everyone who joined us today. Today, we have a very special, kind of a first of a kind event uh, by Electronic Community in strong partnership with our business partner company called Scale Through Automation. Scale Through Automation founders, Wilton and Rob, will be driving most of the conversation today. We made a decision to invite Scale to Automation to share their experience with you because we are at Electronique are very fascinated by the pace that this company is getting momentum in the market. And specifically, as a vendor, we were very you know, surprised in a good way when we started to see how fast this company is able to deliver proof of concepts how fast they're able to build bots. We work with many partners globally and you know, different companies, when they start an RPA market, when they start with a new vendor, they have owning learning curve, own pace. I would say that today I'm very proud to present two speakers who to me is someone who spent mostly seven years in RPA, one of the fastest people in the industry, fastest people to make their clients happy and I think that their experience is worthwhile sharing with you. Whether you're considering implementing RPA for your own company or you are an RPA business, Wilton and Rob are two professionals to learn from. So with this regard, I want to pass the microphone to Rob to kick off the meeting. And I will be uh, talking in the end, just providing a few updates and a few things, Paul, a few things about building a culture that sustains your automation efforts and increases your ROI on any investments in automation once you pass through that initial period of the first projects in your company. And um, I'd like to share the experience that I've seen in some of my previous roles working with really large companies and one of the biggest organizations in the world implementing automation. And I also want to ask Robin Wilton when they will be talking about their experience in implementing RPA. Uh, try to bring a bit more specifics about how it works in small companies, how it works in bigger companies. One of the unique features of STA is their ability to work with both Fortune 500 companies and mom and pop shops. So that experience is definitely worthwhile sharing. So without further ado, Rob, microphone is yours. I'm stop sharing my screen. Please start sharing yours. All right, thank you, Dimitri. Appreciate that so much. Make sure we get the screen shared. How do we look? Is that the screen look good for you? You just hit the play button. You should be good to go right there. There you go. One over to the left. Where? I don't see it. Where? Right there. That's the mute. No, I'm trying you're to get... right you're probably covering it. You're probably covering it from your yeah. Zoom Zoom is playing a game of hide and hide and uh, hide and seek with me here. I found you. <laughs> Thanks, Dimitri. Appreciate that intro. And it has been a pleasure working with you guys. I mean, Electronique, you're talking about customer service. It's it's the name of the game. It's what people want. And I'm so happy to be aligned with um gentlemen and ladies such as yourselves. So thank you so much for this opportunity. And greetings, everyone, and welcome to this webinar from zero to RPA implementation in just 30 days. This is going to be exciting. Uh, my name is Rob House, and I am the COO of Scale Through Automation, and I'm honored to be one of your co-hosts for this exciting, insightful webinar. Now, one of the goals number one goal of this webinar is to make sure that you are looking like this very happy young lady in the top right corner and you and your business are not looking like this lady very frustrated on the left and rpa 
is the way. And we're going to show you that today. All right. A little background on me. I have 20 plus years experience in business development, marketing, and public relations. And three years experience in regards to RPA and actually working with and implementing this technology into businesses. All right. And so what you're going to learn today, and this is very important, you're going to learn what RPA is and what it does. So RPA stands for Robotic Process Automation. Okay, robotic is any repetitive activity, any action that is done repetitively, that is robotic. Process is any process from N to N. And automation is simply automating and streamlining that process. That's it. That's RPA. That's Robotic Process Automation. And that's what you're going to learn how to get your hands on and implement into your business. And you're going to learn how to do that in less than 30 days. We have a pretty nice step-by-step -step roadmap built out to where you can get this technology implemented into your business in 30 days or less because companies have done it. It's very exciting, very exciting time. All right. Um, one of the things I want to make sure that you're doing is that you are taking notes any, any questions you have, definitely write them down, send them out, because this is the time to get the questions answered. So why is RPA important now? So 2020 has dramatically enhanced the need for every business in every industry to upgrade their technology. This, this is the facts. The digital transformation era is among us. And automation is an imperative for every business everywhere moving forward. And because the reason for this is because RPA actually allows for processes to be done faster and more efficient while bringing the company more revenue and bringing more value to the people running those processes. It's a win, 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 win implemented the right way. And we're going to make sure you do that. RPA essentially means you're going to get more done in less time. And isn't it great when you can spend less time doing the things you don't like doing and by doing so, you actually free up time to do the things you need to do and want to do. That's what's called value time creation. All right. So how RPA is going to impact the future. This may be one of the slides I want you to really focus on as you're preparing your mindset to, to witness and watch this webinar. Okay. RPA is the fastest growing software in the technology industry. That's a quote. That's a text. It's a tweet. What that means is that this software is being implemented into more businesses across more industries than any other technology. Gardner said, according to Gardner, um, by 2027, over 50% of all organizations will have some kind of RPA implementation. Right now, only 2% of the small and medium-sized business market are even taking advantage of it. What that means is that early adopters have a tremendous opportunity to take advantage. Early adopters have a tremendous opportunity to get in front of a rapidly growing trend while it's young. This is something to note. I mean, the future of business has, has forever changed and automation is no longer a luxury. It's imperative, imperative for every business in every industry, okay? So, how should you be thinking? How to think strategically when you're gonna be implementing RPA? Okay, so the only thing wrong, the only thing worse than not getting RPA for your business would be to implement RPA wrong into your business because that's like automating bad habits. You don't wanna do that, okay? There has to be, you wanna make sure there is a point and a, a calculated purpose for every action. The goal is to get more done in less time while improving efficiency. And we have a pretty simple four-step process to assist with this and discover, design, develop, and deploy. And we do that in less than 30 days. And we're gonna, you're gonna see that. You're gonna see some examples. You're gonna see some companies that have already been using this software. And hopefully by the end of this webinar, you have enough insight to be able to take some action to really take your business to the next level. So sit back. Uh, put on your thinking caps and get ready to receive some insights that could possibly change your business overnight. Now I hand it over to my partner and CEO of Scale Through Automation, Wilson Rogers.
Thanks, Rob. Thank you for that introduction. Let me go ahead and try to share my screen now. One second. All right. Can you see my screen okay? Can you guys see my screen yep. okay? Yep. All right. Clear. All right. Well, uh, again, thanks, Rob. Thanks, Dimitri, for that entry about our company. And, and uh, thanks for sharing that, that knowledge about RPA, Rob. Um, I think it's very important to know from the beginning so you know exactly what you're going to get into. I'm going to go more into detail about our company and what we've done and how uh, teaming up and partnering with Electronics has really changed the game for us um, as a company, but also for our clients. So um, I'm not going to take try to not take too much time. The presentation is probably about 20 minutes. So, uh, you know, uh, I hope I stay within that time zone. But I'm going to talk straight about the business. I'm not going to get into the tech talk. I'm not a tech guy. Uh, we have a great team that's a tech team. Uh, we we talked to to gentlemen like that, uh, like Dimitri, that has all that knowledge. I'm more of the front end, the business type mindset. So I understand the tech, but I don't speak the tech. So um, that's basically it. So I'm not going to talk any um, APIs and GUIs and no code, no code. Uh, so, um, but what I will talk about today is our experience and why you even why is it even worth listening to us? What what's the advantage of listening to us? Um, Rob touched on a lot of things I'm going to be going into, but I'm going to actually be showing you some details of how uh, the, the data that shows what's happening and also what we've done for our clients. So I'm going to show you some facts and why RPA is so important right now. Um, why is it important to start thinking about it and implementing it now? And the do's and don'ts. Um, there's, uh, like Rob mentioned before, if, uh, you know, if you don't want to automate bad habits, right? So we're going to show you the do's and don'ts and a lot of businesses struggle with this. We've struggled with this. Uh, we've lost clients because of this, and we've learned how to um, to systemize it so we make it, make sure it's easy for you and easy for us, even on the learning curve. So, and of course, we've we developed a system that is a 30 days to automate. We call it, and it's from our first conversation, like the conversation we're having now, um, to implementation within 30 days, and we've we shortened the learning curve and we've speeded up the production curve. So. We're going to show you that, and at the end, you guys stick around. We're going to show you, going to um, show you, share a, a bonus that I think you guys are going to all be happy that you stick around, stuck around for. So, um, our experience. Um, again, my name is Wilton. I'm the CEO of, of STA Group Scale Through Automation. Um, I've been a business owner. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I've owned and operated um, six different businesses over the last 25 years, and I've also worked with a corporate uh, leadership. Um, um, platform. So I understand the mindset of an of a owner and the, the struggles and hurdles and stress that we all go through. So that's why I really stayed into this, got into this industry and stayed in it, even when we were barely getting off and getting a lot of no's. So I've been in it for four years, over a little over four years, um, talked to thousands of businesses and um, had th over a thousand no's, to be honest with you. Um, but we really systemize it and figure out how we can make a difference and share what we can do. And we're gonna go more, more in detail about that later. And then the hands-on experience, like I said, we've talked to thousands of, of businesses and through that, well, I was able to figure out a system um, to make sure it's a lot easier for us to deliver, but also for, for, for our clients to understand. But of course, I'm not doing that alone. Like we, we have an amazing team that's, not even, you know, I can't even talk to say enough about them, but um, all of our team has at least seven years of experience, six years of experience as RPA developers and analysts. And um, so we had a system to where we can find the area, we can design it, develop it, deploy it quick. And, and we all have the same love and passion of, hap of helping the SMB market. We're grateful that we do have Fortune 500 companies, enterprise companies that we work with, but our heart and our passions with the SMB market. And we've worked with four different vendors, RPA vendors over, this, over the last uh, four years. And uh, we've had over a hundred uh, successful processes that have been implemented all combined. Um, but nothing has come close to us uh, partnering up with Electronix. It's, I mean, not even close. I don't even know how to really explain it. I mean, for me, when I first heard about them, I saw Dimitri on the webinar uh, one of our one of our um, associates said, "You got to check this guy out." I we checked him out, and I was first thing, thinking, 
this is too good to be true. This is not right. Something's not, something's missing here, right? Because we've been working in the industry and we understand what the industry is and where in and where it lies in the, in the enterprise enterprise world. But then we start talking about we start talking more in detail, learning more about who they were, their backgrounds, their experience. And we're like, okay, well, these guys, you know, we got to follow them and see what happens. So we jumped on board as a more of a trial. Uh, we love the, the pricing is not even, I mean, no one can even come close. And that's what we were able to do. What we're doing today is because of them and the capabilities of what they could possibly do or what they're doing now um, and, and where they're going is just amazing. I mean, it's just, it's just fun to be part of, of, the, of the growth and seeing how fast they've grown, even since we've been partners and what they're doing um, to impact um, businesses around the world. And uh, it's, just, it's just great to be part of that. When we got started, we really tested it out because we, like I said, we worked with other vendors. So we, we knew some bottlenecks and we knew some areas that were struggles for us. We, we brought these, these same situations over to Electronique's team. And if we weren't able to, to if, first of all, most of, most of the issues that we had um, were easy to, 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 uh, to build. But the ones that we won't, we won't call them roadblocks, we'll call them hurdles. Because if we knew that, that we come to an area where it slowed down the production, we would reach out to their team. And within a, a day or maybe two days, they would say, okay, now we, we, have, um, we have the solution for this. That has never happened. I don't, all the vendors we've worked with, that has never happened before. And from that point on, we just knew that it was, it was time for us to really partner up and, and move forward with them directly. So, you know, it's, allowing, it's allowed us to cater to the SMB market. And we're gonna share a story, a successful story for a small business later on that will, will actually um, um, validate what we're doing for them. So, and then now we're allowed to build a bot store. We've always wanted to build a bot store and build these downloadable bots where people can just go and download processes and, and, our, and our development team is just having fun. I think we have four or five already being built. It's gonna be up on our website. We haven't put it up yet. It should be up in mid February, but we already have quite a few built and we're able to share, uh, share that. And they allowed us to, to really change the game forever. And, and what I mean by that is that everything that we've been offering the enterprise world, the services, everything, we're able to offer the SMB market um, at, a, at a price that they can't even, that other vendors can't even com compete with. So being able to get the same service and deliver the same production um, for the SMB market is huge for us. So we're excited about that. And, you know, the facts that we need to know really about RPA and, and this is what, this is a quote that we, I guess we just sort of made up. Um, and it was just in a conversation I had with a client one day I said, you know, uh, RPA is not the best thing to happen to your company, but it is the best thing to happen for your company. And the reason why we know that companies are looking to grow and RPA is not the answer to grow the company, but it is the answer to help you, allow you the time and energy to focus on the growth of your company. It allows you uh, to, to really focus on or to automate all those, uh, those, those tasks um, that you're not used to, that you are doing manually and you can focus your time and energy on more productive tasks that, that are, that are um, driving revenue, that drive your revenue. You can focus on clients, customer, um, cu customer interaction, relationship management, and any, any activities where human, uh, humans can use their natural abilities to, to, uh, to do other tasks. Um, it also, it automates all your repetitive tasks, all the bottlenecks, all the repetitive tasks in your business that you're currently doing manually those are very um, strong candidates for RPA implementation. And that's where you want to start. Every bit has them. You just have to really know, know which ones to pick at and where, where to choose. And we're going to share that with you here shortly. And I love this one. Um, you know, um, it automates, RPA automates your automation software. It's basically a digital employee on steroids. And what I mean by that, we've talked to businesses where they say, oh, we're good. We don't need to talk. We're, we, we have all the automation that we need. And I ask them, well, do you have RPA? And I'll probably say 9.99% of the time they say, no, what is RPA, right? And at that point, we know that we can help them because they already have automation software. We say automation software is more of a, a piece of the puzzle, right? And even internally, we have about four or five uh, different automation softwares and that's just a piece of the puzzle, but RPA is the full picture. It makes the picture. So it it's, it puts all those automation, all the applications that you're doing 
and it automates all that. So it's, it's a next level automation. And the great thing about this is that when you think about what, uh, what it can do, if you're sitting behind a computer and you're doing something over and over again, and basically if it's in a digital format, that's an RPA candidate, right? And it can do a lot faster, it can do air free and it'll work 24 seven, 365. It won't ask for breaks, it won't call in sick, it won't go on vacation. You tell what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and it does it. And then, you know, we got this from Gardner um, and most businesses today, what you're doing right now, at least 30% of what you are doing manually right now can be automated. And it's more, it's higher on the companies like accounting firms, manufacturing, medical, insurance, the one to do a lot of data processing, that number is even higher. But for any business, small businesses, which we'll share here in a while, you can automate up to 30% of what you're doing now. Just think about it. What if you could take two hours of your team's time away from what they're doing manually and allow them to do something else with those two hours every single day? That, that's a game changer alone. And of course, like Rob mentioned earlier, um, which we'll go here in the next slide, is the growth is, is extremely fast. It's growing fast. And even since the pandemic, it was growing. But now, you know, after the pandemic, sort of, you know, the chaos ended and, and towards the, the May timeframe, we started seeing a lot of, a lot of attention. So, you know, the early bird does get the worm. And right now, you guys are the early birds. So, you know, um, this is very important as we move forward to really find areas that you can really look for the first automation process that we call it the POC. And why is it important? Like we mentioned, it's the fastest growing, uh, it's one of the fastest growing um, um, segments in the, in the software market right today. Um, and again, because this was done before the pandemic and I, I'm ready to see what the, the, the data is gonna be this year um, because I think that's changed. We've seen as a business, the, the change um, over the last six months of how more, more attention and how much business we're getting lately. So it's really changed the game. And if you can see this chart on the right-hand side, we're at, we just started to 2021 and you see where it's going to be in, in six years. And just a, a few years ago, when I barely got started in the industry, it was a $120 million industry. It's expected to be over um, close to $26 billion in 2021 and 2027. And all these facts, you can go to our website, you can figure out where the facts are, but we'll, we'll share that on there on, on our website. But you know, the, the, Compound annual growth rate right now, is, they're, they're predicting is about 40%. Again, I think it's gonna change with the new data. I think uh, when, when you see the, the, the new data for the uh, CAGR this year, that number is gonna probably be a lot higher. And like we mentioned, like Demetri says, you know, uh, we do work with Fortune 500 companies and we've been blessed to be able to, to break ground in there to, because it's been able to catapult us and support us to our vision and our purpose to help small and medium-sized businesses. So the SMB market really is not familiar. If you talk to anybody in the enterprise or the Fortune 500, all of them have some type of RPA implementation. And, and the reason why is because they have, they have the finances, to be honest, they have the finance to do it and they have the team and they have the understanding of how to implement it. They hire the people to understand it. Whereas this SMB market, we wear so many hats that learning curve can be a lot different, but we change the situation. We change that over and you'll be able to see that here shortly. And, and like Rob's mentioned or, uh, earlier, you'll see a ROI overnight. The minute you hit that, turn that bot live, um, you will see the benefits and the value that it brings your business. And he mentioned again, only 2% penetration. And this is a, this is a um, facts that we got from Gardner. It's 2% penetration in the SMB market today, which is a very small, cause you, you just figure that. It's very small. And in the next uh, five to six years, at least 50% of businesses are gonna have some kind of implementation. So this is the time to get involved with RPA. So the do's and don'ts. This is really important um, to know because we've struggled by not doing the do's sometimes and we've lost businesses, we lost relationships because of it, to be honest with you. So we developed develop a system to figure out, okay, how, what do we need to do? And what don't we need to do? You know, uh, we have to understand the capabilities of RPA, understand what it can and cannot do. You have to understand that. And, and when you understand that, you can start finding areas of your business that you can really, uh, that are um, RPA qualified qualify for RPA. 
have a have a strategy on how to implement RPA. Um, and, and through through we say start on the small processes like the the, the low hanging fruit. If you start on the low hanging fruit, you'll develop a system and you'll have the, the, the knowledge and education to be able to, to build a nice strategy. And of course you wanna test, test, test. And we do this a lot on our end. Um, we don't wanna go live prematurely. We go, we've done that before and it's just been a big, big bomb for, for us and our clients. And it's caused a lot of frustrations, a lot of delays, uh, just a lot of canceled uh, agreements. So I won't say a lot, but with some. And we, we've uh, learned how to test, 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 test before we go live. And especially right now, you want to talk to an expert. Don't try to do this on your own. You go to Google, you can Google all you want to about RPA and you're gonna learn different things from different businesses, but most of the information you're gonna find out there caters to the, to, the, to the enterprise world, to the Fortune 500. So it's, there's, and you have to put pieces together, try to figure it out. So it, talk to an expert, find out what works directly for your company, because it's not a cookie cutter service. This is something that's customized. Everything is customized. We talk to you know, accounting firms on the, on the weekly basis. Even if it's the same type of process, the way they do it and the systems they use and the application they use is totally different. So everything is customized. And the things you don't wanna do is, you don't wanna think that you can automate everything. No, okay, you don't think that's gonna happen. Um, you find, you, like you said, you find out, you learn what you can do and find out where you, where you can automate. And don't automate everything at one time. And we're guilty of this, trying to work with a company and doing two or three processes at one time. And, and it just becomes a big headache. And so you wanna work on one process. However, if you are working in with, a, you have a bigger firm and you, you have different departments, it's good, you, you can work, um, start a, a process in each of those departments. As long as there's no crossover, and as long as, um, um, those employees aren't crossing over to the other department because you want to really have a system, a, a system on how to do it and, and have one, you know, if it has two or three people doing a process, make sure that that doesn't cross over to the other department. So if you have two or three different departments and there's no crossover, you, you know, each one of those um, can be automated at one time. Okay. And don't work, don't automate a broken process. Okay. If you automate a broken process, this is going to cause headache. It, RPA does not fix a process. What we like for you to do is work on a process from end to end, let us know what it is that it, it can do. When, once we automate it, then we can start improving what we can do with that process, make it better. But since you already have a process built out, well, let's just automate it. The way it is, the way it stands, automate it, and then start plugging in how you can make it better. And that's how we can get it and get to production right away. And you'll start seeing a, a bigger um, ROI a lot sooner because that's when, that's when uh, you actually get to see um, that you can do other things um, based on, or you could do other things the way the, the way you had it set up before, you can start implementing more, I guess you could say, you can start implementing more. Next thing is, uh, you don't, um, don't apply RPA to unstructured processes. So there's a lot of thinking that goes on. You, th you know, RPA does not think, does not feel, um, it, it follows rules, it follows a logic. So once you build that, then it could be automated, but there's still a lot of thinking that goes behind it. So don't expect the RPA to do that, okay? And don't expect to, to set and forget. When you have it, like we said, or like I said earlier, if you have it, you build it, find out ways you can improve it, okay? And when you do that, you'll start seeing, you start seeing more produ product production out of it and you'll be able to systemize it to a lot faster. So, and if you wanna see the top 10, just go to our website, scaletoautomation.com backslash uh, top dash 10, and you'll have all 10 do's and don'ts on there. And you, we, you'll be happy to see the other five on each one of those. But those are the five top do's and don'ts that we feel that are real crucial to, to knowing before you start doing the RPA implementation. And the late, great John Wooden, I love this quote, if you don't have time to do it right, when will we have time to do it over? You know, if you don't do it right the first time, if you do all the don'ts and you don't do the do's, you're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna, uh, it's gonna be put on the back burner. And then you saw that chart earlier where you start seeing the growth of RPA, that early, you won't be the early bird, you'll be catching up later on. So try to do the process, get somebody involved with you early, and then you'll see how fast it can impact your company. So now 
we've been blessed to, like I said, to be working with Fortune 500 companies, but our heart and our passion, and our love is helping the small, medium-sized businesses. And because we wear so many hats, you know, it's really hard to say, oh, okay, I need to, well, I can't add this onto my arsenal. There's no way I, I'm, I'm too busy. I don't have time for it. I don't have time to learn this. I don't have any of that. So we understood that. And through the years of trial and error, we finally found a system that works and it works perfectly, but it takes both sides. It takes you, your commitment, and it takes our team to make sure that we do what we do. And we, we built the team to be able to do that and it's ready to go. And so how it works and how we do, how we'd be able to do this in 30 days is the first thing we have is a conversation. Okay, let's just say this is the conversation we're having right now. We identify a process that we can, that's a, um, RPA, a candidate for automation. So we'll identify that process. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll send you a questionnaire. When we send you that questionnaire, it probably takes about five to 15 minutes, depending on the length of it to fill out. Um, but you said you you um, you send that commit you submit that questionnaire, and then we'll start we'll start the design process. We'll design a workflow for you. We might email you once or twice just to get some clarification on some things. But we're going to give you an overhead view of what of what this process looks like automated, and that's when you can start seeing more of your ROI. You'd be like, okay, this is going to save this much time, right? And then we like we try to we we deliver this probably within twenty four to forty eight hours. So we like to set up a meeting once this is submitted. We'd like to set up a meeting probably within the next two or three working days um, and we'll show you the design. And once we show you the de design, you like it. If you have to make some changes, we'll go into that here in a bit. But if you like what you see, we sign a mutual NDA and we start the process. So on day four, what we'll do once we get the NDA, we'll set up a groups teams meeting, a uh, group in teams. And so we can communicate on a regular basis. That's how we communicate. Everybody that's involved on our end and everybody that's involved on your end will be in this group. And that's where we share information um, and we start, the, we start the development process. And then we might send you a couple of email, more emails, get the credentials um, and all the different the, the things that we need to, to make sure that we, we're automating it. Um, that takes a little bit more time, but in that two and a half weeks, we might take about an hour and a half of your time. And then once we, fig once we finally have a process we feel is ready to go, go live, we do an internal demo. So we'll do it and make sure it works on our end before we, before we set up a, a meeting with you. And then at the end of the third week um, or sometime sooner, we try to set that demo up for you to see what we're doing. And what we'll do is if, if it looks great and you like it, we go live. If it happens, which happens you know, once in a while on our end, uh, we have to make some tweaks um, it might take about 15 minutes of your time to help us find out those tweaks. And we like to get those done probably within a 48 hour, a 48 hour period, and then show you a final demo. We won't go live until you feel comfortable until that demo is um, up and running the way you want to. And it's our goal to make sure that we complete that within 30 days. And then we go live. And so that's how our system works. But the great thing about this is that it doesn't matter how much you know about RPA, we could take the, our, the first conversation to deployment in 30 days, and we could do it with less than 30, 30, uh, 30 five hours of your time uh, without interrupting your current process or activities. So you can continue working what you're doing. Um, we don't interrupt that, and we do all the legwork on the back end. So we, we could take a conversation to deployment in 30 days and allow you to understand how to find other candidate, RPA candidates within your own company. So not only will you get to learn uh, to deploy it, but you'll start having ideas on how to implement others. In fact, we're working with a couple, couple of companies right now that were on the third or fourth process, and we started about a month or two ago, and they're just knocking process after process. And then we also work with internal teams. Some of the, the companies we work with, they have their own internal IT teams. And so what we do, what we've been doing is helping them build the processes, training them what we do, and supporting them so they can maintain it. Um, sometimes they're starting to build a small process. If they're bigger processes, we help them build it, but we train them and continuous training. We have a training module that, and, and they have communication with our, with our team 24 seven. And we train them and, we, and we, we show them how to maintain them, but we will always have that support for them. So with that, I wanna go ahead and show you, let me, uh, I'm gonna show you, this is one of our clients and 
we have a couple of testimonies. And the reason why I want to this client, because this client only has three employees, including himself. And we're saving him a lot of time and effort. And instead of just hearing it from me, we thought we'd share this for you. And we want to share it for one of our smaller companies because we want to let you know that this is not only impact. You can't sit down and say, well, I can't help me because I'm a small company. This is what it's doing for small companies as well. My name is Marvin Romero. I'm a small business owner. I have a personal injury firm with two employees and I came across Scale Through Automation on LinkedIn. I wasn't sure if they'd work with small businesses because they already were doing things on a larger scale, but I reached out to Wilton Rogers and his team anyway. Uh, we met in early December. Uh, they told me they could help out my small business and we could automate uh, some processes that were actually taking up a lot of our time. So we had a meeting the first week of December. After that meeting, I received a questionnaire, filled out that questionnaire. Within a week, we had a Zoom meeting where we talked about all the things that the bot should be able to do, what the automated process would entail, and what I actually wanted to accomplish. Uh, seven days or, or less from that date, we actually had a bot to look at and a demo to run. And within three weeks and before Christmas, we had an automated process for the business. It was amazing to see that the team came together and put together an automated process within 30 days and also during the month of Christmas. Uh, scale through automation definitely came through for my business. So I want to share that with you because we, like I said, we work on different levels. We worked in the, in the enterprise world, we're, we're working the middle sized business, but we also work with small businesses. So it doesn't matter how big or small your firm is, this applies to it all. It applies to it all. So with that, you know, this is not something you want to, you want to put off. You know, the time is now. You want to act on this now. At least get the understanding of what it does for you. Um, that way you can start thinking about how this can impact your company internally right now. Okay, so don't, don't, don't treat it like it's just a software automation. This is, like I said, this is, a next level automation. And we're gonna do one better for you. Everybody that's here today, we're gonna to offer you a free process. We're gonna build a process to everything that we went through. You're gonna actually be able to see it, feel it, experience it and implement it into your own company. And we're gonna do this for free forever. And what I mean by that is that we're gonna we're gonna build it, we're gonna support it and if things happen where it breaks down or you're adding something else to it, we're going to be there to support you along the way. They probably say, what's the catch? Well, of course, there's always a catch, right? Well, our catch is that you have to have the submission in within 24 hours. That's the only catch. And, and, because, and the reason why we say that is because we know people that are going to be, in, the ones that are going to be interested are going to take their time right now, today, and even tomorrow, talk to their team um, or, or figure out a good process that will be automatable, that's automatable. Now, again, we want to focus on the low hanging fruit, something that, that doesn't take a whole lot of time, but that is stressful and just a, you know, it's just a, something that you just want to get off your plate. So we have until the end of tomorrow to submit them. And when you go to the applicant, when you go to the, um, to the questionnaire, it'll ask you, where'd you hear? Just click on the webinar. If you click on webinar, we know that you are part of this and that's the free process. If you click on anything else like LinkedIn or anything, because we get a few questionnaires, um, those are different. So we, make sure you click on the webinar. You click on webinar, we know you're, you're a part of this and you would, you'll, uh, we'll, we'll start the process for you free. Now, for those of you that are still like, okay, I still need to know more, I wanna know more, what are the use cases? Do you have videos? How can I get a hold of you? What can we talk, talk to you? The best way to really engage with us is go to our community. It's called Business Empowerment Community. And if you go to our website, you, you go to the support tab and click on community, just, just, just uh, you can become a member, it's free. And what you'll have access to, we have all the different industries in there. Um, you can click on there and you can see what we have in there for as far as use cases, as far as videos, uh, different workflows that we have. So you can go in there and see what we have. We're, we're starting to update this now because lately we haven't been able to, probably the last four or five months we haven't because we've been a little, little busy. But now we we are build, we're building some more videos and some more use cases, some more current use cases that that um, that are going to be back there as well. So that's where uh, what I want to share with you today. 
I definitely want to thank you for your time. Um, I'll, we'll be here for Q&A. Like I said, if you have Q&A, if there are technical questions, I'll, I'll, I'll refer to our team to help out with that. But if it's more of the business, uh, the business part and how we're doing it, I'll be happy to answer your questions. So again, thank you for your time. And we look forward to hopefully hearing from you guys soon. All right, Dimitri, I appreciate it. It's all yours. Milton, thank you so much for the talk and thank you so much for the offer. I, I honestly don't think that anyone else in the world made an offer like that. At least I haven't met a pre-POC <laughs> offer from a partner. So, and specifically given that you don't work on the enterprise, that's I think is great, great move from your side. So hopefully someone from the audience will follow up. Um, so let me start my part and that will be really brief because we want to allow more time for Q&A and apparently we do have questions coming in. So probably we'll be answering live. The topic that I'm going to address today is what usually comes next after you completed a successful one, first, two, three uh, POCs or implementations. Maybe you even have 20 bots running in your company of 100 people or so. But at a certain moment, your top-down approach, when you as a business owner or as a manager are looking for cases, identifying cases of auto and automating them will stop working because it doesn't scale. To scale further, you need to create a culture or a mindset where employees in their daily activities are looking for opportunities to, to improve the efficiency to automate. And this brings us completely out of the technology domain to people domain. And I would say that here, technology and people are equally important, but with electronic, the marginal cost of automation is zero. So we can forget about the technology. It's not what prevents you from scaling your automation, the people factor. That will be your major barrier to become kind of fully digital transformed automation first company. And to think about that, to go through this exercise, you actually need to wear a hat of your people, hat of your employees, and think about the situations they encounter in their work from their perspective. So I've seen that in many companies and I will provide you a very simple example. Uh, in accounting profession, you need to categorize transactions as OPEX or CAPEX, you do it all the time. And that's the work that a lot of junior accountants do. I think it takes maybe 5% of all accounting work that junior consultant, uh, junior accountants do. And I worked in an organization where one of the employees came up with a relatively simple Python code to classify transactions. So he trained the model and was able to automate that process. Not perfectly, but maybe 80% of all cases. And then that employee went through this thinking process that I outlined on this slide. Okay, I automated part of my work. It can have potentially this automation may have a organization wide impact. What should I do? Should I tell my boss or I just should sit down and enjoy the fact that I have two more hours of time uh, a day. And now in the remote situation, I am very confident that most people in this kind of situations prefer to keep status quo because they get free time. So let's go through the scheme It's fairly simple. Part of my work can be automated or I already automated something. So what's next? Should I tell my boss or keep the status quo? When you think about, should I tell my boss or not? Your major framework will be around the benefits. So what will I get if I tell my boss? Will I get promoted? Will I get any extra money? Will I get more responsibilities? Will I be put in a driver's seat for uh, being a you know, poster child for automation efforts? What will be the impact? or maybe I will be fired in the end of the day because I auto accidentally automated all of my work. So will I be rewarded or not? On the status quo side, it's simple because you understand the gains immediately. It's your free time or you're just not changing something. For many people, keeping status quo is, is great benefit because they are used to the, to the daily uh, way of thinking and work. So the major factor in answering these, these type of questions will come from what happened to someone in the same situation before? What did they do? What happened to them? Was there a future in the company? And they will be looking for the answer. If they don't find an answer to that, you will leave them on, on their own for their decision-making and you will leave significant automation potential untapped. So building the culture 
and I will bring here word innovation, not for the marketing purpose, but because innovation is about doing things differently and automation is about doing things differently. You need to embrace it innovation culture starting from people. And the easiest way to do that from your first interaction with automation, the type of automation that is that powerful as RPA with regard to what can be automated, start to thinking about positive examples on people that automation produces. There are many angles to that. There are many benefits to people if managed right. But it's also very important to communicate it really well and articulate to your people that it's a rewarded experience, that's a rewarded action, that's something they should be living through and thinking all the time. Because even if the work of the whole division becomes automated, that could happen. It happens in accounts payable, for example, in many teams that do reconciliation of accounts, a lot of repetitive actions, 80% could be automated. If that happens, what happened to the team? How did they get retrained? Where do they work right now? They could be amazing examples. Maybe they're now in charge for driving similar projects as subject matter experts on automation in the company. You should think about creating these incentives for your people and that creates the culture. So we'll be happy to answer questions on that. A few quick updates before we go into Q&A. First, if you remember our December webinar, we announced their electronic Zapier integration and explained why we moved this way. All went well, we are live as we promised. So you can go, uh, we will send this deck later as well. Go to the link to our website to orchestrator page. That's where the collection of existing integrations with Zapier is. You can go there and go and start using the Zaps today. Again, they connected to electronic orchestrator. And we, when we rolled out the first wave of integration, thought about, okay, where in SaaS activities, you may need RPA as the next step. So we went through the, through the list of different apps. Here's Slack, HubSpot, Google Sheets, very important, many use cases, DocuSign, Trello, Asana, Google Drive, Google Calendar, Facebook. Now through any of your workflows in Zapier, in these systems, you can trigger a bot anywhere in your ecosystem to do certain action on a GUI level. It's really unlimited possibilities for automation when we think about integration of Zapier and Electronic. Second one, something we waited for a long time as a personal project, bot library. So we're growing, we have many use cases across the world. We started to bring them together and we don't want to share success stories like marketing success stories. Of course we do that. Here's our client, here's our partner. That's how they made money, they became happy and so on. But we want to focus your attention here on specific use cases. And we think that RPA industry in general lacks that granular small easy use cases. The reason in the past you paid for every bot need to be run. And because of that, all bots were really long, complex, many, many things inside one bot. Now our clients deploy hundreds of small bots because they don't care what the number of bots, we don't charge for them. And because of that, we see more and more granular use cases that combined, that are combined as sub programs into bigger chains or connected in orchestrator. So please go to our website, check out the library. We'd like to work with subject, ma subject matter experts and users and super users on populating this library with content. So feel free to follow up if you're interested to be uh, to submit your ideas or your existing automations with us. So to all of our clients on the call, let, let's work on that together. Let's, let's share these stories with the world. Okay, I think that's all on my side and it's time to drive in the Q&A. So Wilton, Rob, would you like to turn on your cameras? We have Q and A section here, so let me let me go through the questions. So, the first one: Do you have any success stories on blockchain automations? Uh, I personally not aware, but that's one of the uh, kind of better and ugly side of being a vendor. We don't know what exactly you do with with, <laughs> with our software for building bots. They could be examples. Uh, we can definitely try to take a deeper look in that, but. If this work is on a GUI level or API level, of course, it can be automated. It just depends on how much ambiguity you have in your rules. If it's really rule-based and you can create an algorithm, you can create workflow, automated workflow for that using Electronic. Oh, the cost side. So that, that's an interesting question because we kind of flip the model in the market. We are the vendor that doesn't charge for bots, which means that if you work with a company like STA, who already has a 
uh, our development environment, then you don't need to pay for the technology and pretty much what you pay is what you pay to our partner for the development effort. But at the same time, at a certain moment, you may consider having your own um, development environment to build more automations. Or for example, you will have enough bots to consider integrating them into bigger chains and bringing things like Zapier integration through electronic orchestrators. So these things, they uh, listed on our website, we're very open with our pricing. I would say that compared to any other uh, kind of automation platforms, you will, you will find it pretty affordable. Um, there's Angela's question. Will Nero, maybe you would like to take this one. It's, uh, I think, great question for someone who practically is in the field. What's the question? Where is it at? Uh, DC Q&A section. If you go to the top of the Q&A section, that's uh, Angela Ortega. Question about human connection important. These, are you on there, Rob? Can you, can you get it? I don't know what's... Trying to figure out, okay, let me see. Here we go. Have you tried to automate, moderate, automate most of, I try to automate most of my business, my businesses, but I cannot com complete all because I, I consider human connection important and maybe is, lim it is my limit. Are you willing to evaluate first and suggest me? Well, just to answer that, um, what can what can I improve to automate? Well, I think um, you know I think what you're asking here is you know you want to make sure that you don't automate everything that's you know that you want to make uh, that you want to stay in front of your, your clients. Is that correct? Is that am I reading that right? Yeah, it it, it sounds like the, the the human connection people are really concerned about. Once you start adding automation to it, then you know, the human connection be, starts to dissipate, and uh, what happens then? And so you know, how, yeah. so you kind 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 of speak to how important the communication is in, in even beginning the implementation process. Yeah, I think what you want to do is it, it allows you to be in front of your clients a lot more. And when you audit, when you figure out processes that you want to automate. You can spend that time in front, you know, doing the, the, the more of the customer interaction. So what we can do is we can sit down with you and identify areas that you're spending time, just like, like Dimitri mentioned earlier, that are rule based, that you have your head down and you're not, you're not focused on the client. When we find those processes out, we'll start identifying them. You'll be able to spend more time in front of your clients. And that's what we, that's what we look to do is is we want you to spend more time in front of the clients. We want you to spend more time engaging and building your, your, your network and your, and your business. So by automating these processes, we'll allow you to do that. I hope that answers your question, Angelo. Thank you, Milton. Let me quickly go through small questions that are related to capabilities of RPA uh, because I can quickly address them. So, and Neil, you're asking about examples of specific processes that are common in SMBs. Customer onboarding we found that if you, let's say you're a service company and you work with other businesses, typically the onboarding will be an effort. You go through one system, another one, uh, let's say your project management or, or any kind of client interaction, any kind of IT tools, communications. Even when Wilton described the process of going through 30 days, you can think about what can be automated in that process with regard to setting up uh, your teams, for example, to work with client and so on. Any kind of customer onboarding could be cumbersome. So that's a very common process. For example, in accounting, bringing your client data to an accounting system as part of onboarding, that, that's a manual process. Typically CPAs charge money for that if you automate it you'll be able to get more clients because you can offer them free onboarding or you can charge them a flat fee for an onboarding. Let's say next question is supplier onboarding platforms. Exactly to that point, yes. Uh, supply management in general is a big area for RPA. One of our first clients in the States is a, is a manufacturing company that has a double entry problem in their supply, supply chain system. So every time they produce a detail, they need to register it twice in SAP and the supply management system. So they automated the double entry with electronic. Um, can I extract information from web and compare it from what's submitted on blockchain? Absolutely. That's web parsing browser automation is simple. For blockchain, you can probably use GUI level access or API. So that's easy. Um, 
Office 365, Microsoft applications, yes, for sure. So we have native integrations with most Microsoft products. That's that's pretty much required to, to move forward. So, okay, what else? There's a great question on, on Africa where whether the offer Wilton and Rob you made will be valid for clients in Africa. I will let you address that question. <laughs> so uh, from our side, we work with the whole world. <laughs> we, so the bots created in any country will work in any other country. <laughs> yes, and same here is like, you know, it doesn't matter where you are on the globe. Um, if you have a process, you know, it works the same here in the States, you know, you're running a business. We, we work with, we, we're working with the team actually out of India right now and we're working with Australia right now. So yes, it's global. There is a big question from Scott McKinnon on how to identify processes. This is definitely a bottleneck for companies in certain stages. Typically it's not the first process, but many companies, they uh, kind of struggle thinking that to move with RPA, you first need to have a big bucket of processes to kind of understand what, what's, the, what's the potential total gain. I, I would discourage this way of thinking because it's typically very easy to find a single process, like a simple thing that could be automated with high, like let's call it positive ROI. Let's, let's avoid the word high here to be uh, ground to the reality, but it will be positive. The reason with Electronic, you don't need to pay for execution of automated process. So with other vendors, you need to evaluate the time gains versus what you need to invest in the technology. With us, you evaluate time gains versus what you invest in building bots, like for example, with STA or on your own, it's a different level of cost. So all processes become much more attractive and become super easy to find the first one. Then bigger work. There are two ways to find processes at scale. One is to work with consultants who are experienced process consultants. The benefit of this way that alone identification of the process, you will find process improvements that don't need RPA. What Wilton said before, don't automate things that work badly. It's like automating bad behavior, great words. Uh, another way is to use technology. Um, technology, we have own solution in, in electronic. Um, you can use that a process discovery, we call it people dashboard. It pretty much allows you to get a download of what employees spend their time on between different apps. What's the share of repetitive actions there? Uh, we have proprietary kind of machine learning model to track that. Or you can go with process, process mining tools, which are a bit more complex, much more expensive, but you integrate them in your ERP system. And in the result, you will get like an X-ray of the business, uh, you can do benchmarking, for example, and that will give you a good clue on where to go with automation. But that's an enterprise approach that doesn't work in, for smaller companies. The investment in finding processes uh, would not be that high. We suggest an optimal way is to go with a partner. If you, can, can, if you don't want to build this expertise internally, who can combine both process expertise and tools we, we have for process discovery. So that's something we can definitely discuss moving forward. Um, okay. And, and let me add something to that, Dimitri. Um, and, and I think some some of you may be thinking like, well, Dimitri's talking a lot and I don't really understand what he's, where he's going with this. Um, because I think about four years ago, three years ago, I've been like, okay, well, I understand part of it. What he said at the beginning, and we talked about it before, is if you focus on one process, a very simple process that can be automated, you'll start understanding how, how it all, it'll all start making more sense. You'll start identifying areas. So you start off that real, the low, low hanging fruit, and then you'll allow yourself to, to educate and to get more knowledge on where you, how you can implement it in, into other areas of your business. I see the question from Glenn regarding, um, I would call, <laughs> a correct terminology will be optical character recognition um, step as a part of automation. Optical character recognition, including recognition of handwritten text, is a solved problem for RPA. You definitely can do it. Two, more variability you have in your files, lower the quality of your files. Typically, you need to spend more time on building the bot or leveraging specific machine learning trained model that are not part of standard RPA suites. So I would say that case is very specific. 
definitely I can confirm that most of the cases can be automated, but I can say that some cases would be hard. And I, I typically discourage clients from starting the RPD journey from OCR use case. So, mm -hmm. or for example, maybe you will want to automate some PDF work you have. It's just easier and quicker to do. OCR is a powerful tool. There are many tools. We have integrations with a few of them, um, including some standard tools. But um, think about that as a very impactful use case that you don't want to crack first. Okay, so, wow, question starts continue to come in. What, what built-in screen scrape support of electronics? So, uh, can go online and check out how our, our how our web picker works. So essentially, there are a few ways you can record the process. That's the simplest way, or you can go and pretty much build your workflow from existing steps. So uh, it's I would say web scraping. We did it really well, uh, including any kind of browser automation. Uh, in December, actually, it was later than our webinar. We as a vendor, Electronic, participated in Global RPA Challenge. That's a competition of RPA technologies, and we achieved the best result in web automation. We have the shortest time to complete forms on the website. When these forms are randomized, our bots can very quickly connect to different UI elements. And um, that's that's something we're very proud of. So for any kind of web applications, definitely check it out. Data privacy regulations that can impact um, you know, some websites, they explicitly prohibit using automations on them. LinkedIn is a famous example. So if you automate them, it's pretty much on your own risk. It's not the technology violating certain rules. It's someone who adjusted the technology to do that. From data privacy in general, our bots work locally. So unless you want them to share data externally, they would not. So from the security perspective, they are inside your perimeter. We have SAS Orchestrator, that's a very popular product. It's in our perimeter in AWS. It sits under AWS Guard Duty, the most sophisticated AI security threat prevention system out there. Um, or you can deploy Orchestrator locally. That's actually something that STA now has expertise in. It's something that you will consider when you work with really sensitive data that you want to make sure stays in your perimeter and you won't monitor any kind of communications using the firewall. How do you identify processes in small businesses? So that's where probably people are more important than technology because everything is visible. So I will, I will start probably from your finance processes. These typically are major candidates. Then I will go through all customer facing roles and then down the value chain up to IT. Because in IT, there could be many data migration things that uh, you consider being a routine that you need someone to do and you may be outsourced, but in fact, that, that's something that you can delegate to a bot. Do you work with accounting? Yes, we work with accounting a lot. We, um, we not only say that we work with accountants, we actually do a lot for the accounting community. Uh, there are three major pillars to that. Uh, one is our partnership with Sage. Uh, we are preferred vendor for Sage Accountants Network, and we do a lot of kind of work thinking about where in accounting, where in Sage ecosystem, electronic can maximize value for clients. One of the use cases that is kind of work in progress is bringing uh, client data into accounting systems. Second big use case is moving data from accounting systems to your tech systems, something that many CP companies will be doing over the next few months. So, um, these are use cases that we delivered. There are accountants who are experts in, in kind of transforming the accounting profession, like Jason Stats and his organization called Realize.io. Uh, we work with them. They are evangelists of us. Um, and there will be bigger news about our presence in accounting, uh, but they're not public yet, so I cannot disclose them now. But during our next webinar, I will be talking a lot about them. Um, success story for SAP Ariba, supplier management automations. I cannot share them right now, but if you follow up with our team using this email, we can share with you. Uh, we have many SAP cases that just happens that for many clients, that's where, that's where the automation gaps are. 
Oh, I think I addressed all the questions. <laughs> so Rob Bilton, something else you want to share with the participants as we wrap up? Or do we have any questions in chat? Oh, we have. Yeah, and uh, while, you, while you're looking at that, I mean, if, if, there's, if there's questions that we didn't answer, you can reach out to, like I said, to Dimitri ourselves. Um, you can just, our, our, our direct is rpa at skilledautomation.com. Um, that goes to our team. We can answer those questions right away. Um, go to our community that we shared earlier. Um, if you want me to share in the chat, I can share it again in the chat so you can grab that. Um, but uh, but no, I think uh, you, you've been on answering all the questions that, that uh, have been coming through perfectly. Great. So for the links and the follow-ups, uh, this amazing offer that STA did shouldn't disappear. So we will be sending an email teaching up maybe one or two hours from now with all the links and call to actions. So stay tuned and thank you so much for being here with us. It's great to see that our community events are getting momentum and see you all in February. Thank you. Thank you.